Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. If you guys have a switched outlet like this and you're tired of people turning off the outlet accidentally and losing power and you have to put tape on your light switch, stay tuned to this video. I'll show you how to convert a switched outlet to a regular outlet. Hey guys, welcome back. Like I said, I have a switched outlet here in one of my bedrooms, which is pretty common in some of these modern homes where you'll have an outlet controlled by a light switch by the door just so that you can control um, the outlet. Maybe you'll have a bedside lamp plugged into it or some other device. But a lot of times this becomes annoying because you may turn the light switch off and people who don't know that it controls the outlets are trying to look to see what it actually controls. And a lot of times you end up having to put tape on your outlet, or I'm sorry, you actually have to put tape on your light switch so that people don't constantly turn the power to this outlet off. So I got some requests in the comments asking me how to convert a switched outlet to a regular outlet. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. It's not as hard as you think, but just stay tuned to the video, follow it step by step, and you should be able to have this done in 10, 15 minutes max. It's not that big a deal. Follow a couple steps and you'll get this thing swapped out in no time. And as always, I'll leave a link in the description to any of the tools that you see me using here. All right, so let's jump into the video, guys, and let's swap this switched outlet out and let's convert it to a standard outlet. Before we begin, guys, you wanna make sure that you have the power to your outlet turned off. You can see here, bottom outlet has no power the top outlet has no power. If you guys are not sure what breaker controls your outlet, see, there should be a link somewhere around here to one of my videos that shows you how to find the breaker that controls the circuits in your house. Um, but if you do, turn off your breaker first before we start working on this outlet. All right, the first thing we wanna do now is we wanna remove our cover plate and our outlet from the receptacle box. Now that you have the outlet removed, the first thing you want to do is you want to identify the power that was connected to your switched outlet. In this case, we knew that the top outlet was the outlet that was connected to the light switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look on the hot side. You, you can identify the hot side by looking at the smaller of the two prongs. In this case, this one here was the hot side connected to the, out, the, to the light switch. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna set that aside so I know that this was the cable that was connected to the light switch. Once we've identified that cable, the next thing we need to do now is just disconnect our neutral, ground, and our hot. This was where the switch was connected to. If you notice, there's a little tab here that was broken. That is how you create a switched outlet. Normally, there's a tab here that connects the top and the bottom outlet. So what they did was they broke that tab so that only the top outlet and the bottom outlet were on separate circuits. The top outlet was connected to the red line, which was connected to our switch, and the bottom outlet was connected to the black wire, which was connected to our constant power. Now that we're done with that, we've identified all our wires, we can go ahead and set this outlet aside. The next thing we want to do now is we want to prepare our wires for the new outlet. In this case, I have an outlet here and I'm going to use back wiring. Um, in your case, you may want to use the, you may want to screw around the terminals here or in some, some cases they may have push pins in the back. They call it backstabbing, but you can use whichever method you prefer. In this case, I'm gonna use back wiring, which is basically, I'm gonna feed the wires through into these slots and tighten them down. But first, I'm going to have to strip our wires to make sure that they're ready to be inserted. 
So go ahead and prepare your wires all except this one. We're gonna leave this red one aside. We're gonna do our neutral, our ground, and our hot. If you guys are not sure how much to strip off, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. If you notice on the back of our outlet here, you can see we have a groove here with a gauge that shows the length. It says back wire, and this one says side wire. So in this case, we're gonna use back wiring, so we only need about that much of our wire. So I'm gonna trim these wires back a little bit. And that should give us just enough wire for the back wire. Now we just need to connect all our wires. So the only thing that's tricky in this scenario is what to do with this red wire. The next thing we want to do is we want to cap this wire here. You can either cap it by putting a wire nut on it. In this case, I have a Wago 221 um, wire connector. I'm just going to slide my wire into it and close it down and that's basically what how i'm going to cap my wiring here once i'm done with that i can tuck it in once when i get ready to put all my wires up all right so the next thing is we're going to connect all our wires it doesn't matter whether you go on the top or the bottom um, as long as you connect the hot to this side and the neutral to this side and the ground of course we're going to connect to our grounding screw here so let's go ahead and connect all our wires up. We're gonna first start by connecting, we're gonna start by connecting our neutral. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect our hot. Make sure they're all snug. And then we can go ahead and connect our grounding wire. All right, now with all our wires connected, now we can go ahead and push our wires back into the box and re start reinstalling our outlet. Once you've installed the outlet and it's nice and secure, you can go ahead and put on the cover plate. With our cover plate on, nice and secure, we can go ahead now and turn on our breaker. Now that our breaker is on, you can see we have power in the top outlet as well as the bottom outlet. And everything is grounded and installed correctly. And now you're complete. You don't have to worry about having a switched outlet anymore. You now have power on both uh, the top and the bottom outlet at all times. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, as you can see here, we have our outlet installed. We no longer have a switched outlet. It's now a standard outlet and for you guys to use as you wish. If you guys have this, if you guys found this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, give me a subscribe and leave a comment if you did find this helpful. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.